not as close to the officers as they were before. There were several protesters. Oh, hold on. Okay, they're about to pull somebody out of the car there. Yeah. Yeah, any kind of car driving toward a police line, obviously not a good idea um, and, and could certainly be perceived as a threat. some other video that's not cleared by our staff just behind the scenes but black smoke within the dollar tree the dollar tree is completely tore up i say that it's, it's been demolished on the inside i mean there's ransack yeah but thank you yeah much better use of terminology there um still waiting to see what the officers are going to do i know they pushed the media back there and uh I, st I see some vehicles. Some vehicles were close in line. They approached one vehicle. Looks like they were trying to take somebody or they were telling somebody to leave. Uh, mind you, the parking lot, it's a parking lot. There's only so many entrances and exits, exits, and it looks like a lot of vehicles are trying to exit that parking lot now. I think we may be on the tail. I said, you know, this is a marathon, not a sprint, but we may be seeing the end or uh, the conclusion of the protest because uh, I'm guessing a lot of the folks who were in part of the protest were parked in this parking lot. But again, we, I, I have not had a chance to see what's behind these photographers if there are still protesters out and about. So it, it just depends. Yeah, we don't. Like they, they really relax their stance on that police line. Definitely not seeing nearly as many protesters, uh, at least in this shot that we saw at the outset, uh, that were standing outside of the law enforcement center in Brooklyn Center. Uh, where it looked like at least a thousand, uh, if not more, uh, protesters were gathered uh, when this all began. And now it would seem that uh, not nearly as many are present on scene. But of course, as Sean said, uh, there could be many more just behind this camera here. We don't know. But it would appear that things seem to be calming down. Well, police at least succeeded in clearing the police station, which obviously was their initial objective, uh, made some arrests and are just pushing these protesters back, dispersing them. Now we're but getting a better show. Oh, it would turn around for a moment there, and I didn't see that many people. Yeah. Now, whether they regroup somewhere else or they're done for the night, um, we don't know. I mean, it's, it's coming up on about quarter to ten there, local time in uh, the Minneapolis area. Where are we going? Come on, back here. Back here, sir. There's the convenience store that you were talking about, too, that we're seeing in the other shot here. Okay, we still see pro some protesters back here. So we got another glimpse here in this other shot, and it's gone away now. Uh, but we did see some folks gathered at a convenience store. It's just so hard. I mean, we've only we've got basically two cameras, all both on the same shot, and we don't have any other aspects or, or we don't have any other views or point of views to be able to give you a better look at what's going on. We apologize for that. But we take these leads through various different agencies that we have partnerships with, and we bring them to you here on Local News Live. And we have no control over what those feeds are or what they are shooting uh, with their cameras. Um, here we go. Here's a look. And it looks like there are still quite a few people gathered back yeah. a little further. Five minutes ago, too, uh, the uh, Minnesota um, Public Safety Information Operation Safety Net tweeted, Firefighters headed to the Dollar Tree. Please allow fire trucks through. Stay away from that area to give firefighters room to work. So that was five minutes ago. We've yet to see the, a fire truck show up here but unless they're on the uh, you know the back side of the comp the uh, building which is a possibility so by getting that next glance or the glance from uh, that other camera angle we can still see as we said a minute ago that there are still protesters in the vicinity and officers are going to continue to advance until those protesters are dispersed but um, We'll just have to take a look as, as they, they advance yet again. They are now past the strip mall. They've gone through that entire strip mall here in the past 10 minutes. Yeah. Yep, so this is where that, that gas station now. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see just how, how long they keep pushing. Maybe some fire engines finally getting there. Here's some sirens. And that, I can't tell if it, there's looks like a... I don't want to assume anything. I see a little bit of an orange glow up there, but I... I see it too, but I don't yeah. know where that's from. It's way off the distance. Yeah. That is very hard to tell. Here we go. 
we go. Here's another angle. Ah, uh, we just the shot froze up. I believe it's a spotlight. Here we go. SWAT just arrived. According to this picture, and mind you, I say just arrived. They, they have brought in another vehicle. Uh, in these situations, they also ask other law enforcement agencies from around the region to assist with what's going on. Now, these are state, just from that shot right there, it says state troopers. So these are Minnesota state troopers who have, um, and there are a lot of state troopers in the state of Minnesota, obviously. They've probably called in all their troopers to assist who aren't covering a certain region. Um, but as you can see, they are staged through that entire area. I'm wondering if we're at a different angle, because I don't see... It looks like we're about on this this shot. We're back at the apartment complex. Well, I'm not so this is a different complex. This is just basically the street uh, in front of that gas station. Gotcha, and the, uh, so they're just... That line stretches all the way from the strip mall across the street and well across the street. Uh, but you can still see as the camera kind of turns a little bit, there are still folks that are just kind of just staying feet away from those officers and troopers as they advance. But this line holding strong, police able to, to push these protesters uh, pretty far away from the their initial start of where they were all gathered at the police station. By making some arrests, firing tear gas initially. Since the tear gas, the initial tear gas, we've seen more pepper spray, pepper balls uh, that have been fired. And we've seen some arrests. Um, haven't really seen any physical clashes between police and protesters. I haven't really seen them swinging the batons that they're holding. Um, which no, is for, good. Yeah, correct. No, sorry, Graham, to, no, to sure. interrupt, but uh, that, that's correct. Uh, for the most part, we have been seeing uh, crowd control measures that aren't uh, uh, basically hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, with batons and whatnot. Uh, we've seen officers move forward, uh, uh, grab someone, take them to the ground, be surrounded by other officers, and then... Uh, uh, dealing with things like uh, being pelted with uh, uh, objects being thrown by uh, others. But so far, no, we haven't seen anything like uh, 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 several protesters trying to, like, rush the police line or, or uh, uh, breach the line of any, any sort like that. It's been uh, not nearly as uh, violent as that, at least uh, from what we have seen so far. Yeah, and, and the majority of these arrests will likely be uh, misdemeanors. This is just violating curfew is a misdemeanor uh, there in Minnesota. And obviously, uh, if police have evidence of someone hurling something at them or video or, or you know any kind of the charges certainly could be upped, or, and that would certainly be a, a felony. But most of these uh, folks who were peacefully arrested just kind of for, for not moving, not getting out of the way, uh, will likely be a misdemeanor charge. Yeah, the, um, when a curfew is put into effect by the city, it is usually, uh, yes, a misdemeanor. It is a civil infraction, and so most likely it is a ticket. Uh, when Omaha, last summer, uh, we had uh, several uh, protests that turned violent over the summer last uh, year. And so what happened was a, a number of people were arrested and charged with uh, uh, breaking curfew, property destruction, resisting arrest, resisting lawful orders, uh, but the vast majority of them uh, had the charges dropped later on uh, uh, by the county attorney. I see someone being arrested right there, taken away. Yeah, so there's another one, yes. just saw a, another arrest being made by police in Brooklyn Center uh, at this uh, protest, this demonstration. Uh, this is again, uh, uh, the police line seems to be just outside of a uh, of strip mall type of business center uh, where a Dollar Tree has been ransacked, uh, windows destroyed, smoke billowing out of it. And uh, we now have another view. Uh, it looks as though the line of police is moving forward again towards this gas station. And uh, every time the line moves forward, our camera crews, our reporters, try to move further back to be able to, uh, well, 
frankly stay out of the way, but also to be able to keep a good view on things. It looks as though uh, this is kind of the other side now. We can still see there are a number of protesters oh, no. or at don't, least don't interested parties, uh, uh, civilians out there past curfew uh, uh, at the scene. And it's getting closer to a rather large intersection, it would seem. And that is another possible... I'm almost done, Graham. I'm sure. sorry. Uh, um, uh, uh, that's another possible uh, charge is if uh, the police keep pushing and people then eventually are just standing in the street, then you get uh, you could be arrested for obstructing traffic. Right. Yeah, and this is uh, certainly a big intersection there, and, and they've the police have really almost cleared the gas station at this point. As soon as this reporter starts yeah. speaking, we'll get an update uh, from her, but she is in the parking lot of that gas station right there. So, Do you want me to show you? Or this one there. I guess there's two gas stations yeah. right across the street. You see a lot of those armored vehicles, police vehicles, SWAT vehicles, Bearcats, uh, behind the officers there, troopers. that line uh, advancing very quickly already swept the strip mall and have uh, pretty much swept this this one gas station although it looks like the line kind of extends to both gas stations uh, it's hard to tell exactly as more more people are taken into custody it looks like here i mean it's a fine line with those reporters too that have the cameras right up in the faces and certainly reporters can be arrested too if they don't back up uh, quickly enough yes uh Reporters are not immune. Uh, uh, they, they need to stay aware and not uh, get uh, carried away in the moment trying to get uh, the perfect shot or uh, trying to see something. They have to maintain awareness and uh, be able to get out of the way when necessary because it's a fast way. If you're not paying attention, it's a fast way to uh, end up in jail or uh, possibly get pepper balled. And uh, that is also not very pleasant from what I am told. Yeah, and that's what the uh, the officers are telling the uh, looks like the media there just to kind of keep backing up. You hear an announcement saying curfew in effect. You need to leave the area immediately, or you will be arrested. Again, we're watching a couple of shots from at the exact same angle. Just one's a little closer, one's a little further out at this point, but. So just a, a little bit of an update for you all. Uh, I'm Sean Wheat, along with Graham Olkins. We've also got uh, Michael Bell here, here in the Local News Live studios giving you this update if you're just not joining us. I know some stations just joined our coverage in progress. And we uh, let's go ahead and give folks a update on what we know so far, what, what this has stemmed from. Sure, this, this stemmed from uh, the shooting and killing of a 20-year-old unarmed black man yesterday. Uh, it happened Sunday in this uh, suburban uh, Minneapolis city of Brooklyn Center. It was it started as a traffic stop. Police say they pulled over a 20-year-old um, uh, Dante Wright because he had expired uh, license plate, expired registration, um, and police say they ran his plate and realized he had a warrant. They tried to take him into custody as police were putting handcuffs on him. Uh, as seen on body cam video released today, uh, Dante Wright spun away from the officers, got back in the driver's seat. That's when one of the officers um, pulled out her gun. She apparently, according to the police department, thought she had her taser in her hand. She screamed, taser, 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 uh, and said that she was going to tase Dante Wright. She fired, uh, fired, hit the trigger, but unfortunately she was holding her service weapon, her pistol, uh, and fired a shot into uh, the 20-year-old man there. He was able to drive away, but he died shortly after. Um, again, the police department released the body cam footage today of that traffic stop uh, and basically said that the officer accidentally uh, drew her weapon instead of the taser. Uh, that officer has been placed on administrative leave. Her name is Kim Potter. She's a 26-year veteran, so a veteran police officer uh, who police say pulled her taser and or pulled her gun instead of her taser uh, and fired that one fatal shot uh, that killed a 20 year old unarmed black man and just for context this is happening you know only about 15 minutes away from where George Floyd uh, was killed so this is a city that is uh, certainly already on edge with the trial of Derek Chauvin going on today um, and uh, just only about 15 20 minutes away so 